The benefits of maintaining the seabed and bar areas are many. Essentially, these bars can block access in and out of rivers for vessels of any significant size, and this has a direct impact on jobs. Opening up these rivers to tourism and commerce is a common sense nation building exercise which can reduce the environmental impact and expense of road and rail transport. The settlements along South Australia's Murray River exported and imported cargo to and from Adelaide for 70 years until 1925. A lack of addressing a safe ocean access at the mouth of the Murray River meant ongoing tragedies of vessels and human life forcing the cargo onto an emerging road and rail system. The outflow location of the Murray has never been addressed properly despite the Murray being navigable for 970 kilometres and to a height of 36 metres above sea level. Our largest inland waterway, the Gippsland Lakes, also had problems at the outflow location. So in 1910, the lake's entrance was engineered, which still required dredging to maintain the naturally constant deposit of sand and sediment from the upstream which occurs at every bar. This was done for 30 years by the side casting dredge April Hamer and is still maintained by a bypass pumping system and occasional dredging. As a result, to this day, the lake's entrance channel continues to be usable by vessels up to 90 metres for servicing Bass Strait oil rigs, fishing and other recreation purposes. Seabed maintenance is a common sense strategy because the negative environmental impacts are minimal, while the positive nation-building opportunities are many. The most recent success story was the development of the Southport Bar, which was used irregularly by a dozen trawlers, marked by continued loss of lives. In 1986, the visionary change to a seaway channel changed everything to the better. Today, the Gold Coast Seaway has over 300 vessels per day, many of them commercial, whale watching, diving, sailing, fishing and others, employing over 450 people, including support industries. Another benefit of seabed maintenance at the bar is flood mitigation. Reducing major flooding events by even a few inches can mean the difference between dry feet and inundation for many hundreds of homes at immense local cost. After 100 years of successful sand dredging in the Brisbane River, radical green lobbying ended its responsible maintenance. In 1996, the following 15 years worth of sediment built up, shallowing the river and exacerbating the levels of local flooding with disastrous and tragic consequences in 2011. Most coastal shires have requested regular dredging to reduce flooding and provide sand and aggregate for local industries. The best form of seabed maintenance is to do small volumes regularly, as opposed to significant volumes after long periods of neglect. Safety is everyone's responsibility, and a neglected bar causes unnecessary risks. Routine maintenance via dredging reduces navigational hazards, such as running aground within the shifting channels. Many people have been killed when crossing the bar inbound when broaching and hitting the forefoot of the vessel and then capsizing. This mainly happens to trawlermen in timber hard chined vessels. When crossing the bar outbound, many wheelhouse windows have been smashed. For outflow locations requiring maintenance on the bars, the mobilisation costs mostly outweigh the seabed maintenance costs. Cruise ships provide excellent opportunities for all regions of Australia. Many cruise companies are seeking new destinations, including sites where the ships anchor in deep water and tender the passengers ashore. However, the sea access must be safe. For example, the very scenic Cooktown port entrance has been declared unsafe by marine insurers Unless it looks safe, the ships will not allow the tenders to operate. And unless it looks comfortable, many passengers will not venture ashore. Regarding defence and emergency response, the Royal Australian Navy has said it will support any initiative that will allow safe access into remote areas. Many small coastal inlets that used to be accessible from the sea are no longer safe due to siltation. Regional shallow area channel work would require a small vessel such as this 35 meter utility catamaran, equipped with multi-beam sonar, sub-bottom profiling, as well as hydrographic and benthic survey. 
Its seabed maintenance options include a water injection bed leveler, a 16 inch rain bowing pump for up to 50 meters, as well as a trailer suction head and cutter suction option. An optimized hull shape means it can get from Brisbane to Cairns in less than three days using only 6,300 litres of fuel. It has a 1.3 metre draft, allowing it to work in shallow areas. Its side cast nozzle, positioned outboard, can rainbow up to 50 metres in the direction of littoral drift. It's highly manoeuvrable, can bed level efficiently and remove weed buildup in tight corner berths. It can load and push a 6,000 ton loaded barge with spoil or aggregate. But most pleasing of all is its sophisticated looking design. Here are the locations, state by state, that have already been identified as being able to easily benefit from this nation building strategy to create deeper and safer channels through their bars, resulting in local jobs, assisting tourism and exporters, as well as regional development. Upgrading our outflow locations into safe, navigable waterways has proven very successful in Lakes Entrance and the Gold Coast in terms of employment and regional development. This can be replicated at more than 120 sites nationwide to implement environmentally sound seabed maintenance programs. To summarise, most bar areas would require a 90 metre long channel, 35 metres wide and 4 metres deep totaling 12,000 cubic metres each year to provide a much safer crossing for recreational and commercial vessels. Most councils would implement their own clean sand extraction if given ongoing permits to extract up to 12,000 cubic metres each year from the river mouth bar area. These permits include two days of bed levelling on ebb tides after each sand extraction process. Where materials extraction is not required, rainbowing or water injection channel maintenance should be considered as a positive continuation of the existing natural littoral drift process along the coast. Presently, councils are paying $30 to $50 per cubic metre of sand from upriver or quarry sites for essential use within the Shire area. This nation building initiative will provide the opportunity for locals to safely run marine operations in commercial and tourist ventures, boosting regional employment, as has already happened at Lakes Entrance and the Gold Coast Seaway. My name's Peter Scott. I'm the Mayor of Cookshire Council in far north Queensland on Cape York. My council unanimously endorses and supports this nation building activity.